Where does most of the Japanese tea that we consume come from? Let's find out. Hi, tea friends. This is Elsa with Nanoshan, where we share in the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm teas. If you're new to our channel, maybe you're looking to expand your brewing skills or your tea knowledge, then please don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you like what you're seeing, then please do give us a thumbs up. So today we're going to be looking at where Japanese tea is produced. Now, in reality, tea is produced in Japan pretty much all over the country, with the exception of the northernmost island of Hokkaido and then the metropolitan area of Osaka. However, when we're looking at tea that's being made really for commercial reasons, we actually end up looking at regions that are only in the southern half of Japan. So we're talking about the central island of Honshu and the southernmost island of Kyushu. And in particular, we are looking at five different prefectures that are responsible for the majority of Japanese tea productions. Those are Shizuoka, Kagoshima, Kyoto, Mie, and Fukuoka. So let's look at these a little bit more closely. Um, so Shizuoka is the prefecture which is responsible for more than half of Japan's tea production. It's a prefecture that's located in the central island of Honshu on the southernmost half. And it's a coastal prefecture that, thanks to that, has a lot of fog, a lot of mist. It also has a slightly colder and harsher climate than the other prefectures that we're going to be looking at. And it has a lot of rainfall. And it has this fertile, rich soil, which makes it really perfect for tea production. So Shizuoka produces a lot of just average commercial grade sencha. Um, and then it also specializes in fukamushi sencha. Um, fukamushi sencha is a, I don't know if you remember from one of our previous videos, but we were talking about the fact that in um, Japanese tea, the first step of processing after harvest actually has to do with steaming and that this can be a slightly longer steaming lasting for two to three minutes or a slightly shorter steam for lasting about 30 seconds. And the longer steam is called fukamushi sencha. So this is one of the specialties of um, the Shizuoka region. So I'm going to be drinking a little bit of sencha as we go as we go along today. Um, and Shizuoka actually also has this very mineral rich soil, which is great for tea production. And of course, it's also the home of Mount Fuji. So you've perhaps seen some of these um, beautiful photos of tea fields with Mount Fuji in the back in the background. So that is Shizuoka Prefecture. And another thing to note about Shizuoka, because it produces such high volumes of tea, it has these facilities that are capable of um, mass, uh, mass uh, production. And so actually, a lot of Japan's other tea growing prefectures, once um, they've grown their tea, they've done the first processing. So that's the processing that happens on the day of harvest, which includes steaming and then goes through some initial rolling and drying steps. Then the tea is no longer as time sensitive and can undergo a brief period before undergoing what's considered the final processing. And the final processing includes things such as um, sorting, so separating the uh, finer leaves, which can be sold um, as extremely high end tea uh, from the sort of larger, coarser leaves, which then might get cut up a little bit, from the fannings, so the dust that's come off that's then separated differently. Um, the stems are also separated to be sold as kukicha. And so you end up making these different variations of tea that's available in the final processing. There can also be blending that occurs. So the but without looking at the specialty teas of Japan, 
the, the more mass-produced teas aren't so concerned with origin, actually. It's not like with China. So it's really much more looking at a consistent flavor profile. And that occurs with blending. So actually, often what you have is teas from different farmers, regions, even prefectures that are blended together for a particular flavor profile. And so often that occurs with teas from Shizuoka and teas from another region. And in fact, sometimes because Shizuoka does have these large scale production facilities, teas are sent there for blending, for packaging, as well as for retail. So. The, um, the second region, which we're going to be looking at, we're actually traveling further down south to Kagoshima. Now, Kagoshima is a prefecture located on the southern island of Kyushu. Um, and this, interestingly enough, when you think about the fact that tea has been produced in Japan for more than 800 years, Kyush um, Kagoshima actually only became really serious about tea production in the 1950s. But since then, due to various factors, it's been able to actually catch up speed and is now responsible for about 20% of Japanese tea production. So that's actually for a relatively young tea region, quite impressive. And this is for a couple of different factors. So because of where Kagoshima is located, um, the region actually has this sort of subtropical climate. It's incredibly warm, it's incredibly humid, and the tea plant there is able to have actually up to five harvests when you go from the first springtime to October harvest. So it's actually a very uh, fruitful and fertile tea region. Part of what makes it so fertile is that the soil there is actually covered in this thin layer um, of ash called shirasu, which is thanks to a um, volcano in, in uh, Kagoshima called Sakurajima. So this is fabulous for creating these very, very richly flavored um, tea notes. And the other thing which makes Kagoshima such, uh, uh, such a fruitful tea region is that actually there's a lot of very flat terrain there. So now there, the farmers are able to use these mechanized cultivation and production um, techniques. So actually, I traveled to Kagoshima, um, oh gosh, now maybe about four years ago, and rode on some of those harvesting tractors, um, which was quite fun and what was actually quite interesting to see as a contrast between these two person held, um, slow, more slowly operating machines, for example, in Kyoto Prefecture. Um, Whereas in Kagoshima, it's these tractors which only need one person and are able to go much more quickly while still retaining an impressive amount of accuracy in the leaves that they are, that they are um, harvesting. So Kagoshima does do a lot of mass production teas, but there are also more and more these focuses on really um, beautiful specialty teas. So you have areas, for example, such as Chiran, which are famous for having these teas that are high in umami, high in sweetness, um, and with almost no astringency whatsoever. So the third tea region that we are going to be looking at today is actually Kyoto. And Kyoto is probably the most historically important tea region. It's where tea seeds were first brought over from China. Um, it's actually in the uh, 1100s by a monk named Isai, who had been studying Buddhism in China. There he discovered tea, brought it back to China, and brought it back specifically to um, Kyoto, which at the time was the capital of Japan. Um, and he actually uh, planted the first tea seeds in a monastery called Togano, just outside of Kyoto. And you can go there today and see uh, this first tea tree. So Kyoto was therefore, is therefore considered the birthplace of tea. And in particular, the area of Uji um, is extremely celebrated for these high quality teas. 
And nowadays Kyoto, although it doesn't make a very high amount of tea, is considered the primary producer of matcha um, and also makes a lot of gyokuro and sencha. So, um, and I can also recommend to you if you're looking to do some tea tourism, you can travel, for example, to Uji, which has this very festive celebratory tea vibe. You can have tea ice cream, which of course you can have all over Japan, but you can step into these shops which have been around for um, hundreds of years. You can see it's like, I think in some cases, it's like the 12th generation um, tea you know, uh, shop run by this company, that's by this family that's been handing it down for 12 or 11 generations. So that's, of course, really fabulous. And Kyoto has, so once you step outside um, and you're in the prefecture, there's these gently rolling hills, there's this climate, there's this cold winter, but there's also these very hot, very humid summers with cooler nights, which makes for um, just great terrain for producing tea. So the next region, which we will move to, also in the central Honshu Island, but further south of Shizuoka, is called Miye. Um, tea has been produced in Miye for a very, very long time, since the, the 14th century. Um, nowadays, it's, it primarily is producing tea that's then used for um, food production. So for example, to go into ice cream or into desserts or things like that. But it is still considered the primary producer of kabusecha in Japan. So actually, I'm drinking right now um, our Nanuoshan's kabusecha. Kabusicha, for those of you who are new to this term, is a sort of sencha, which is actually shaded for the last two weeks before harvest. So that makes it, it brings out these fabulous umami notes, but a little bit less than gyokuro, and it's probably also a little bit more affordable to make for farmers. Um, this one, which I'm drinking now, so this is um, Nanuoshan's superior kabusecha. It has these incredible umami notes, and it actually feels it, it actually feels like I'm biting into like a snap pea, a spring pea. It's very thick, very brothy, very savory. It's really, really fabulous. Um, so this is kabusecha. Uh, which is also which is short for kabuse sencha. It's a sencha which is which is shaded for two weeks, um, and the northern region of Mie makes quite a bit of this um, kabusecha. So, and then our final tea growing region that we will be looking at today, we travel again back south to the southern island of Kyushu, and here we find Fukuoka. So Fukuoka has historically did also receive some of the first tea seeds which Isai brought over, the monk Isai brought over from China in the 1100s. Um, he planted some seeds there, so that started that. But actually, it's said that a couple years, a hundred years later, in um, 1432, another monk named Shuzui came back and brought this time higher quality seeds from China to then make this higher quality tea. So he planted those specifically um, in an area known as Yame, which nowadays makes this um, really celebrated Fukamushi sencha. So deep steam sencha from Yame is definitely quite a premium, quite a premium tea. Um, this monk Shusui, when he uh, came back from China, also taught the farmers there really how to cultivate tea and how to create quite um, a superior and a premium product. So um, Fukuoka is known for this yami sencha. And it also, although the production there is, as far as total volume, it's relatively small. Um, Fukuoka only produces about 3% of Japan's total tea. However, they produce 50% of Japan's gyokuro. 
Um, and their gyokura, just like their sensha, is known for having this beautiful umami, very barely any astringency, a good amount of sweetness. Um, and that is also considered quite uh, a premium, a premium tea, thanks to very fertile, very fertile soil and uh, beneficial climate as well. So we're, I'm go we're going to also put up some statistics for you to show you how many hectares per year um, Japan, these different regions of Japan or are responsible for producing. You will see that Shizuoka really primarily takes the lead, then Kagoshima is um, in second place, but only about 20% as we had discussed. And then you'll see that these other prefectures, which we've mentioned, are important for their different specialties, but are making smaller, smaller batches and smaller volumes of tea. So it's interesting to, to keep in mind that Japan is actually probably the eighth or ninth largest producer of tea in the world, but that actually the majority of that tea is kept for internal consumption. Only about 3% is sent out for export. So um, I hope that this was useful information. If you already have a favorite tea region, um, a favorite prefecture, um, a favorite tea mountain, please, please do share with us in the comments. We love hearing from you always. Um, and as a reminder, don't forget to subscribe, give us two thumbs up, and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.